Hey, welcome to the Dukes of Sports. I'm Randy Lively with Paul Perry again. Hey, welcome. Whoops. Oh, we got a little, a little audio snake cord there. there. So, uh, hey, thanks for joining us. So, uh, we'll be with you for the next hour, and uh, we'll be talking some some sports, obviously. Hence the name. Yeah. Hey, you like our new banner? Spiffy, huh? <laughs> Real nice. Yeah. I'm glad somebody gave me advice to pick that up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You don't hurt your arm patting yourself yeah. on the back yeah, there. I told you, did I steer you wrong? No, no, yeah. no. It's Actually, good. it's larger than the ones I have. I had, I think, a two by five. Uh -huh. That's why yours came in a bigger. Good job. Yeah, came out good. Came fast. Very. The price I, was yeah. right. What could be better? Yeah. Fair. It was fair. So, where you want to start this week? <sighs> Your ball game. Go ahead. You know game. we're probably going to go over some of the things we talked in the last yeah well last week too. But the first thing that popped into my mind is uh, good old Chad Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> what a. I, I don't a know joke. what it is with these athletes. I mean, he, he, the trouble, poor poor athletes, they all get clumped in with bad apples too. Yeah. You know. But you now he headbutts his bride. Been married what about a month? Yeah. They get into an argument because she finds a receipt yeah, in the for, trunk for uh, some condoms. Yeah. And then he ends up headbutting her enough to draw blood. And <laughs> he gets himself arrested. Yeah. Uh, also got himself released from the Dolphins. Well, he got two releases this weekend. Got released jail. from the Dolphins and got released from the police. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what a jerk. But, I mean, just... You know, this might be the end. I mean, the, the yeah. first Dolphins game, I think he had one pass thrown to him, a short one, yeah. like a four-yarder. He dropped it. And so they may have cut him regardless. But the point is, do you think anybody's really going to bother to give this guy a shot? I don't think now. 35 years old, gotta, I mean, it, it, the age is against him, but th this doesn't help the situation. No, yeah. So I mean, he's he's going to I think he got to be a little on a desperate It'd be side. very well the team if 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 a team does pick him up it would be a team that's really desperate. Say you're going uh, say they are really really low on ball players. And that'd be the only outside. Sometimes oh, those gosh. guys get picked up, Yeah, you know? but Jesus, you know. There's a lot of You I'll could tell wait you what. for another team to release somebody and pick them up and probably be better than he is at this stage of his right. career. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have much to go on, you know, based on what he did last year. No. Well, they claim he, he, they claim he never could uh, pick up the Patriots' uh, playbook. Yeah, well, that's a little disconcerting. Too. Well, I've seen those playbooks. I know a defensive coordinator who was a professional defensive coordinator for the – he was for the Patriots years ago. And I've seen that playbook, let me tell you. Right. but You're uh, not like the old days in, or in high school and you got X and O's and you got three, four plays. No, but this is no rookie either. Yeah. Well, that's right. I mean, I'm just saying a playbook is not an easy thing to learn. So you, I mean, Yeah, but everybody else does. No, no, I'm not, I'm not sticking up for them. What I'm, what I'm trying to say, you, you can't be a dummy and play football. Right. You got to, you know, you just don't say, okay, run to that post and cut. You got you to gotta yeah. know your but, job. You know, even so, I mean, you can't say, oh, geez, it's a new system. Well, no, no. God, for, geez, what, 40% on the guys on that team, 30%, it's a new system. Well, well all that proves is whatever teams he's played for, this system isn't as tough as the Patriots. Yeah. So you look at it that way. But, you know, he went the whole year without sure. being able to kind of dial into yeah, well, it. Yeah, so. well, probably thought he was uh, – didn't have to know the playbook. He was going to just go out, like I said, run 10 yards and throw me the ball. With a little bit that he got in last yeah. year, he didn't really need to know the playbook. <laughs> that, 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 well, they, they showed, though. Oh, yeah. They showed. Yeah. So, anyways, the Patriots had their first preseason game. Yeah, preseason. Eh, you know, the, the only thing I took out of it was, uh, you know, Dane Fletcher, uh, you know, one of the rotational linebackers looks like he's out for the year, torn yeah. ACL. Those things happen. But I think the Patriots being the Patriots, uh, they will find somebody else to fill his role. He, he, he played well last year, you know, in situational, uh, 
instances when, when he got in. But I think they can find another guy that will, by the end of the preseason, be able to, uh, to pretty much do the same yeah. thing. It's just me. I, 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 don't put, I don't put any faith in preseason. I, I look at a Belichick, his theory of, 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 at least I think his theory is just like mine. I know how certain ball players are. My job is to get ball players in shape in the preseason, give them a little workout. I don't, I don't, I don't want them to get killed in the preseason. What I, my job is to do is to find players A, B, and C who I don't know enough about. Yeah, well, the give them agents, the chances because I know how Randy Lively, if he's a starting linebacker for me last year, I know what Randy Lively is capable of doing. So I, I want Randy to get in shape and you know go 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 through the motions with Randy. But I want player A, B, and C. I got to look at those guys, right? Because those guys they gotta they gotta take when they have the opportunity, like a preseason. Those guys, those preseasons are very important. Oh, yeah. Well, Very important. That's why I think the NFL, uh, like the commissioner office, is way off base because they want to add a couple of games to the regular season and right. shorten the preseason. And I think that is the most dumbass thing I've heard in a long time because there's no way a team is going to get in shape with, like, two exhibition games. And for a staff to be able to evaluate, evaluate players right. in, in just two, you right. know. Uh, I mean, you've got your practices and stuff like that, but, you know, the old saying, there's nothing like a game situation. Definitely. And, uh, and I think what you're going to find, if they do that, too, is uh, there are going to be a lot more injuries. Uh, well. and, but I, I think, you know, to say they don't need, you know, that month, to fine tune their team, as you were saying, see what you've got amongst these rookies, free agents, and stuff like that. If you've only got a couple of games, that ain't enough. It's just not enough. And well, there's four exhibition games, correct? Right. Pre preseason, yeah. But if they lengthen the season, you know, to 18 regular season games plus the bye week, they're going to make up for it by shortening the the preseason. Yeah, and that to me is totally foolhardy. You got sixteen. Well, they're talking four to two, right? Whatever yeah, you went like four to three. You're talking sixteen games. Yeah, and I think that season. follows up the schedule. And, and look how look how many injuries there are already. Right. Uh, I think you know NFL's doing pretty darn good. Yeah, I think Their so. Their TV I... contracts are pretty darn good. Why mess with it? Right. You know that that's my theory. Uh, the running back by committee thing, uh, Belichick doesn't seem to be getting away from that. It's Danny Woodhead, Woodhead, yeah. uh, Ridley, and Vereen. Vereen uh, showed a little bit, but again, you know, like you said, exhibition game. But at least he showed he's got something, so there might be something there for, uh, for the regular season. I don't, I don't think they put that much faith in, right, in the preseason stuff right, right now, Belichick and his crew, as much as how they work out. Yeah. Game situation, but I agree I didn't with you 100%. I the game. We went I out agree to, with you. Uh, I watched. We went to uh, Woods Hole that night and saw <coughs> a, a play at their local community theater, okay. so I didn't get to see uh, any of the game. You I, didn't I miss heard, much. heard that he had Edelman playing all over the place. Right. Uh, and the next day on EEI, they were, you know, practically casting the mold for the Hall of Fame plaque for that rookie. Uh, Chandler Jones. Right. Uh, I mean, they were just gushing about this guy. Right. But, I mean, he, uh, I don't think his stats or anything, you know, get worked up. Over. The, only, the only thing I saw, and it was the first preseason game, was, let's face it, it's Brady. I'm not talking about Brady, what he did. His protection. Yeah. I mean, he, al he almost ended his this year's career on one... Yeah, they were pick, he was picking they, artificial turf out yeah, of his Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure that there was a lot of hairs being pulled on that. Well... That's, he, that, that's more of a concern that I saw of that whole game. Yeah. Even though it was a short time, but... But you only had that was, two of your Well, then don't put, then, 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 then don't put Brady in that situation well, this get, early in the season. Yeah. He doesn't need it. Well, I just said five minutes ago. 
We know what Tom Brady's capable of doing. Don't put him, if you, if you only got a few players, as you were just starting to say, don't put him in that situation that one bad mistake in a preseason game is going to end his yeah, I know. season. But he's still got to play. So, I mean, oh, and, yeah, but out. that was the first preseason game. It's not, the, and you didn't have your, play, your, your offensive lineman, as you were trying to insinuate. Don't play him. Doesn't have to play. They, 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 well, no, I so. definitely even dis- with the regular offensive lineman, there's going to times where he's going to be eating dirt. De- definitely, definitely. But those those offensive linemen are going to get in, get in better shape now. They've gotten a couple back, like you you said. But that preseason in the first game, and he got some rookies in there protecting Brady. Now the third quarterback he was in there, fine. I mean, I hate to say it, but. <laughs> You can't you yeah. can't lose Brady in a yeah. preseason game in the be- very first game. No way. If he, he didn't feel comfortable with his offensive lineman, meaning Belichick, Brady should he well, played as short as he did. Yeah, but you it's, know, I mean, he played lousy anyways. It did, but Brady, Brady's Brady. But I'm not uh, worried about Brady. That's uh, just about what it amounts to. I'm not worried about him. Yeah, I am worried they, about your offensive line. Yeah, supposedly Mankins is back practicing. Right. This Brian Waters, uh, I don't know what his problem is. I guess it's money. Uh, uh, I mean, he, he made the Pro Bowl last year, and he hasn't been in camp at all. I mean, he's yeah. just... Uh, well, and then, and like you say, you, you know, these guys coming back, but injuries can happen just like well, you said in the will. beginning. Well, and they will. Sebastian Vollmer most likely is going to be out at some point because he's going to hurt his back again. Yeah. You know, you've got these huge guys oh. with bad backs, uh, it, you know... You don't totally get over that, and it's easy to re-aggravate it. So that's you know that's why depth is important. The only way they're going to get it is by, you know, yeah. playing. But uh, they said the high tower, the other uh, high draft pick, had a, uh, you know, a fairly good game. But uh, the, the only thing I took out of it was, uh, you know, they lost uh, a half decent linebacker and. Uh, as you said, they made it real obvious that offensive line needs. Yeah, and, and needs work. my opinion of that game is, I don't even, I haven't got one. I don't really care. Well, the only good thing was only one guy got hurt. And uh, you know they and. Uh, and otherwise, it was a pretty stinky old game. You know. Yeah, and seven to well, uh, six can I or something. Say something about the NFL. That's, yeah. it, it, I just popped in my head when you were just saying they're doing well. You know, money wise, is oh, always. Yeah. But. This, I, I'm just as out of the blue, not out of the blue. This has always bothered me. I've had season. I used to have season tickets years and years ago. Yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, the NFL still are thieves. When you got a regular season game, and we're just going to use a figure, a hundred dollar ticket for a regular season game, and then you have the preseason games that you have to buy yep. as a season ticket holder, and you pay a hundred dollars for that ticket. That's stealing. Yeah. NFL steals every year. And they sit there and with their proud, and I just, it's been a craw. People are like, you got season tickets, you paid 100 bucks, and you try to say, hey, somebody wants to go to the game, bring their kid, exhibition. You say, well, you know, they cost me 100 bucks. You have to, guy, I'm paying $100 for the first preseason game of the year that Brady's going to play three and a half minutes? No way. NFL. I'm sorry, you're thieves. You've heard it before, but I just got to get it off my chest. But it doesn't matter. Well, they charge what the market will bear. It, it, they've got more money than God. They, can, they care about the fans. Take care of the fans, at least in the preseason. You're only talking two games, but if you've got two tickets, that's 200 bucks each game, yep. 400 bucks. give me a break. It ain't, it, that isn't even in demand. Because the pe- they don't sell it, it out. It doesn't matter. It does. How long is the waiting list I don't for agree season with you. tickets there? That, no. As long as people are willing when to When I pay had you. season tickets, they gave you the option. Yep. The NFL says, oh, we got another way to get more money off these people. That's what they did. It's, it's well, of extortion. Course they did. It's extortion. But you know what? They've got thousands of people ready. I'm More not. I'm not saying that they got to get the them. Money. All I'm saying is the price of the ticket should not be the same value of a regular season game. That is all I'm saying. 
Right. I'm not saying. All right, so you get around that real easy. You, low, you lower the exhibition price and you raise the other ones. They're going to be the same money. <laughs> But they, they don't, they, you're right on what they, they, they would do, but right now what they do is they, they raise the season ticket prices anyways. <laughs> so you lose on both ends, at least my end on, and, and mentally to you, oh, well, we're getting a break, the tickets are only 50 bucks for, for preseason instead of 100. Right. And it ain't 100. You know those tickets are more no, than 100 but, bucks. But, but even so, all right, Paul, so we're gonna charge you 50 bucks for the exhibition game. Yeah. And for the 16, for the two exhibition games, and for the 16 regular season games, we're going to charge you 100 and a quarter. They're yeah. going to do it anyway. Right. So but they're going to do it. They're going to go to the 100 and a quarter. They're and they're going to, man, now the preseason's going to go to 100 and a quarter. At least if they go to the 100 and a quarter in the regular season, they're going to keep the preseason to 50. That's my eye. I, okay. We, I, I, they're going to get the money out of you one way or the other. Uh, it's just it's extortion. Well, you know what? Extortion. Then don't go to the exhibition games. But you got to buy the tickets. You're missing that point. Well, the season ticket holder has to buy that ticket. So you just figure you're 16. That's a lot of money. And no wonder the NFL is richer than God. No, they're richer than God because of the uh, TV. TV contracts. and stuff like this. Because, like I said, for years and years and years, oh yeah, season but... ticket holders did not ha even have to buy the exhibition prices. I know in the values that changes. That's like buying a house yeah. 30 years ago. I, but, I understand that. But to make you buy those tickets at same value of the 10th game of the year? No. I, I, no way you're going to make me give in <laughs> on you, that you NFL. You don't have to, but they're still going to get it out of you. A lot, the, the Boston Red Sox get it out of you, too, on sure. every stupid thing that they want to They do something. They up everybody's prices all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, they get it you know? out of you on the concessions, See, That's too. supply and demand, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, as long as you, want, people... you want to get your prices down? You started to say it. Don't go to the games. Yeah, as long as people are willing to pay. Yeah, don't uh, go to the games. You want to get your Red Sox tickets down? And they're, not, they're sold out on paper. We jumped right back to the other thing. They're sold out on paper because the ticket agencies are buying the bulks of the tickets... Yeah. So when a tourist comes into town, you want to go see your Boston Red Sox? $300 a ticket. Huh? You want to go? $300. There's a lot of seats that are empty at Fenway. Yeah. But on paper, it's sold out because they're bought. Yeah. Well, they're still, still so, in John Henry's pocket, so that's sure. all that matters. I mean, so, so the Red Sox is, you know, but NFL, I'm sorry. You're an extortionist. Always have been. Well, yeah, I know. But I, I love football. Yeah, well... I, Good. See, that's the problem. You I mean, go I to the have... games? No, I can't afford it. Can't afford it. it. Oh. But you know what? <laughs> Would I... you like to go to an exhibition game? Did I give you yeah. the, the second game for, for $150 a ticket? Why yeah. wouldn't you do that? Because I can watch it for nothing on no. TV. No. What if, if I, you know, it wasn't on TV? It was blacked out. But it is. Would you pay $150 to go see an exhibition game? Doesn't no, matter. you wouldn't. You wouldn't pay it. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't pay it. But I don't have to. No, because no, I can no. Sit you got my living got room. Devil's I can, advocate. I can be. Devil's advocate. I can be nice and comfy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we're tall. You didn't even watch the game anyway. It's exhibition. Yeah, like. But but. Would I'm, you pay hundred fifty? Well, why would I want to go see an exhibition game anyway? Would you pay hundred and fifty dollars for a preseason I game? I wouldn't pay twenty five bucks. That's right. So the the people out there that they, that they're getting, they probably haven't got food on their table, but they're well. Shame they're on them. Around. Yeah, all right. What so, do you got? Uh, what's the deal with the NFL officials? You think they're going to be back? I don't I, I mean, I, they're making some pretty good money for part-time work. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what... Mo mo most of them, I, 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 they're very executives. Oh, yeah, they're making good they're, bucks They're anyways. bank presidents. I'm just making this up. I know they're in the executive boards and stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what their comp complaints are, I will say. It's like the old story of uh, these new ones that they had, like we've watched the exhibition games have been on. You got high school, you don't Are even they? have college refs. College, yeah. No, you got high school refs There's out there. There's high school refs out there? And I haven't been following uh, that close. You know, they're, they're making, you know, the current refs are making well over 100000 bucks a year. Well over. And that quarter is usually a part-time job to them. It is. You know. 
So, I mean, their job starts like on a so a I'm Sunday so, game. It starts so on I'm a supposed third. to feel sorry no. for these guys? Yeah. I don't think so. Hey, Shut gee. up and be glad you got it. Well, I hope the... There's a bunch of guys refereeing, uh, you know, Big Ten and SEC football. I'm sure they would love to make that step up. Oh, yeah. Did they, if they had a clean sweep, as we'll just call it a clean sweep, I mean, how many officials are there talking? I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. Is it there's six on the field? Yeah, I think so. Six on the field and probably a spare. Yeah. So you get seven per game. I mean, I mean, how many teams are, you know. No, but I mean. There's a lot of people who, uh, I mean, that would be a big step up. I, you know, you got to have the up, right job to go there. Come up though, to you but, and I mean, say, but, hey, Paul, uh, we've seen your work, you know, on yeah. a college level. How would right. you like to be an NFL uh, referee, uh, you know, you're going to have to work 16 days a year. Right. Uh, and you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll give you 140,000 bucks for that. Well, I and, think I'd find the time. And yeah, and then you could afford to buy exhibition seats for the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. So, can buy a new but camera. Yeah. I, 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 I just find it hard yeah, to well, have a lot of sympathy. I haven't been following it, but, uh, you know, I don't know what the bargaining problems yeah. are, you know, I mean, you follow NASCAR much? Let's just no, switch gears. No, I don't. No, they had no. a road race. You know, they do two road races a year. They yeah. had one last weekend in uh, Watkins Glen, New York. A uh, guy named Marcus Ambrose won it. That's for those who care. Well, but, do you... But, uh, no, the, the, but the, it, the point standing is incredibly close. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's leading one point in front of Greg Biffle and two points in front of Matt Kansas. So, you know, that's basically a, like a three-way tie at the top. Yeah. So, I mean, it's real, real. Do you, uh, do you follow it at all? A little bit, yeah. I mean, Loudon's only in New Hampshire. They have it up there all, every once a year, too. And they got two up there. They have two now? Yeah. Okay, because oh, I remember. they got two for the last few years. Okay, well, I know when they first started, it was just one. And I and... happened to go visit my son who lived a half hour from there. Uh -huh. And they had just got out of the track. <laughs> and I got stuck. I thought I was on Route 3 trying to get over the Sacramento oh, Bridge. Oh, Jesus, I can imagine We did, And we were tourists. Oh. And I had an ex, well, I had my son's mother-in-law. They lived in that area, and they knew all the back roads. Oh. And we're stuck on 93, uh, you know. Oh, to, Jesus. <laughs> but that, I remember when yeah. Loud first got it, you know, the racetrack. Yeah. They just, well, and, so they, and, they, and they, as much as I don't follow, but I know the numbers are astronomical of, yeah, I, of the uh, fans and and you go to the local pubs around here, they they sit there and what I've been yeah, in them I when mean, I they, used to used to bend the elbow. But they call they call them athletes, you know. But they call I them mean, athletes. Well, think about it. You're sitting in a car, right? Yeah. Uh, you're working a few hours for that one day a week, and you're steering left. And you got some guy telling you what's going on. Yeah. A spotter, they call him. Yeah. Way up high. And there's no one come oncoming traffic to deal with. <laughs> there's no oncoming traffic. Nobody coming at them you. Guys, no, oncoming, but there's all kinds of people around you. Yeah. Well, still, that's like driving on 495. I mean. Yeah, yeah. The, the only, test track for these guys is just Route 3 heading to Boston, and right? Only, they throw them out there and on you're only going on 93. Left. You're only, you don't even only going in circles, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, how tough can it be? You're only joking, right? No, I mean, really. You ever try to get in one of those vehicles that is shaking like 99, the vibrations of a vehicle? Yeah, but they only have to do it for a few hours, once a, one day a week. I wish I had some money and I could buy you, you know, like you can go to fantasy baseball. Yeah, why don't you Get you, do you a that? fantasy ride in one of these cars with Jimmy Johnson. Sure. And he, and he gets in the car and he says, okay, Randy, here, here's the steering wheel. And Beautiful. Just, he pops it up yeah. and hands it to you, you know. <laughs> no, I mean. I won't say they're athletes. You get to go. But I know one thing. I, you get I, to go fast. <laughs> yeah. You get to steer left. And you're sitting down while you're doing your job. <laughs> God. Hope you NASCAR fans, <laughs> if you're listening uh, to this show, get a, this is a one man's opinion. Get only. a life. One Jeez. man's opinion. God. You know, and like I was saying, if you go to the local pubs, Pen when there's a big race you on, ever, you heard they got lot. pools and oh, yeah, they sit there and of course it's going sure, around in circles. Sure, Do you know what's amazed? Uh, what's has, I have, because uh, I've been in the pubs a few years back, like I say, I don't 
hit the pubs anymore is there been TV. TV has uh, made it even like sitting in the in the car. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's made it nice. Uh, we uh, yeah. So you don't even have to fill up your own gas. You got guys putting gas in the car for you. Hell, they change the tires. Exactly. Change, you, you know, know, every 10 minutes. You sit in the car? Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, we're going to take a short break. Okay. Uh, and uh, just to introduce you to our, uh, our great underwriters uh, that not only support the Dukes of Sports, but also Sandwich Community Television. So we ask you to hang in there, bear with us, and please watch and pay attention because uh, there's a lot of good information about these businesses and uh, well worth it. Uh, and we'll be back uh, very, very soon with the second half of the show. See you in a minute. Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Cape Cod is proud to support community TV. Some of the refreshing and satisfying products offered by Coca-Cola are Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Sprite, Fanta, Dr. Pepper, and Moxie. 125 years and still teaching the world to sing. Kinlan Grover Real Estate sells and lists more property than any other real estate company on Cape Cod and is pleased to support community television and the Dukes of Sports. Heritage Floor Covering supports community television and is located in Heritage Park off Route 130 Sandwich. When you look down, we look good. Carpet, vinyl, tile, and laminates. Sales, service, and installation with 40 years experience. The Sagamore Inn, 1131 Route 6A in Sagamore, is happy to support community television. We are open for lunch and dinner every day and specialize in Italian-American cuisine, fresh native seafood, and specials. Sandwich Animal Hospital, 492 Route 6A in East Sandwich, is pleased to support community television. We are accredited by the American Animal Hospital Association and offer surgery, dentistry, general, and preventative care. Appointments are available Monday through Saturday, 508-888-2774. Feel free to visit our website. Sandwich Car Wash is easy to find on Route 130 Sandwich near Coca-Cola. One and a half miles off Route 6, Exit 2. Save even more with our one or three month passes for unlimited state of the art washes. We invite you to visit our website, sandwichcarwash.com. Open daily. 125 years and still teaching the world to sing, Coca Cola Bottling Company of Cape Cod is proud to support the Dukes of Sports. Some of the products offered by Coca-Cola that you can enjoy are Dasani Water, Powerade, Minute Maid Juices, Vitamin Water, Fuse, V8, and Honest Tea. With 15 offices from the Canal to Provincetown, our experienced and professional agents get the job done whether you are buying or selling. We also offer summer vacation rentals and can assist in mortgage financing, serving the most buyers and sellers across the entire Cape. Check us out at kinlandgrover.com. Heritage Floor Covering supports the Dukes of Sports and has a spacious and extensive showroom to browse through. Cheryl and Russell are fully insured and offer free estimates. We sell the best and you pay less. 508-833-7600. The Sagamore Inn is pleased to support the Dukes of Sports. Feel free to visit our website sagamoreincapecod.com for our full menu, catering, and directions. Ask us how you can get a free meal on your next birthday. 508-888-9707. Dr. Leslie Harmon of Sandwich Animal Hospital, 508-888-2774, gladly supports the Dukes of Sports. We offer lifetime care for dogs, cats, birds, reptiles, rabbits, and more with an on-site diagnostic laboratory, complete pharmacy, medical diets, microchipping, professional grooming, and flea bath appointments. 508-888-8225. Sandwich Car Wash Route 130 also does detailing. Express detail in half an hour or less while you wait or the works by appointment at 508-833-1522 where you can arrange to use Bubbles, our courtesy car. 
gift cards available as well. Make a unique gift. Hey, welcome back. At the second half of the Duke to Sports. Hope you enjoyed uh, hearing and seeing about our underwriters. Uh, check them out. They're great businesses. Uh, I was supposed to tell you to do that, but uh, it's too late now. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, we were talking about NASCAR. I just got one other little quick thing. You know, you heard of Roger Penske, I imagine. Yeah. Right? All right. His two, he got a couple of sons, Jay and Mark. They got themselves arrested last Thursday over on uh, Nantucket. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They, they're both in their 30s, and let's see, uh, they got arrested for uh, uh, breaking and entering into a yacht club. Uh, the assault and battery against a couple of women were dropped because the women didn't want to, uh, you know, press the charges. But uh, what they were doing is they were urinating in a parking lot. And these two women see him and they say, hey, 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 you know, stop that stuff. So one of them, being the, the gentleman that he is, res, uh, decided to act by continuing to urinate on her shoes. So, which didn't go over real well. And then I guess the two brothers did a little pushing and shoving with the girls, you know, real intelligent. And then they decided to run away. And so that's when uh, they decided to break into this yacht club, which, you know, they weren't members of, uh, to hide out. Then the cops came and found them. Would they think they were going to swim off Nantucket? I don't know. I imagine they probably had... Yeah, had uh, a couple bent their elbows, as but, I say. Uh, but, I mean, what... what you, know, you know, I mean, that's I don't know. like... You know, the public urination is, eh, you know, this was like 2 in the morning. But, you know, to then turn around and pee on a woman's shoes and then have to give them some shoves and stuff. You know, I mean, the hell granted, subject, you were but, drunk, but, but pretty you well. know, if you didn't do the second, like, they probably yelled, hey, don't do it, don't do it. And then if they just finished what they were doing and just left the women, probably wouldn't have said nothing. Yeah. It was the after stuff that yeah. they did. I mean, they, a woman who... Two o'clock in the morning, and she doing. They're doing walk in the streets, but well, they weren't in the street. They, well, this was a clubhouse parking yeah, lot. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, they would have just laughed it off too. Hey, guys, don't knock it off. Yeah. And, but the guy has to go and pull yeah. up, as Real. you call the gentleman of the two. No class. Yeah. No class. Yeah, I wonder well, what you know. But they so. just write it off. No different than uh, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, except it gets reported in the in the yeah. news because well, like of say, who they are. You know. Mr. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you watch any golf? No, you're hitting, hitting golf. golf. Yeah, I'm probably the 1% in the state of Massachusetts in the country, maybe, that doesn't play golf. Oh, well, I didn't have the temperament when I uh, was ready to play. Well, Rory McIlroy, uh, uh, I think he set a record. He, he won the PGA, which is one of the four major yeah, championships. So, yeah, golf. I know of golf. He won by eight. It's a good, that's a... <laughs> That's a lot. Tiger was tied for the lead at midway point, and then he just didn't have a good weekend at all. And actually, apparently, the only one who had a real good weekend was was McElroy. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of your, well, we weren't speaking of it, but your Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, Peter O'Malley. Yeah. And uh, Phil Mickelson. You know Phil Mickelson. That's golf. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're part of a group. They're going to be buying the Padres, apparently. Oh really? Yeah. I know he was outbid for to to take over the Dodgers from uh, McCourt. Oh. He was in the running, Peter O'Malley. Yeah. So I don't know how many are in this group. Probably. I've never figured out why they gave it up in the first place. Back when uh, McCourt picked it or uh, bought oh, it. Yeah. Uh, back in roughly, because I remember going to. Yeah, because the family owned that for like. Oh, Walter forever. O'Malley, and then Peter. Peter was the son in. Uh, they, they, they gave up the team, and I know, exa not exact here, but I know in 2004 the Dodgers came to Fenway, and I was there. McCourt was already the owner, so I don't know if he picked it up like in 2002 or three. But why the O'Malley's gave it up at that time, I'm not, because I, I don't think it was, like, a lot of things aren't given up because you don't want it. There might have been more than one owner in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because that's been in the family since the late 40s, early yeah. 50s. I mean, you know? I don't know how many people are in this group. Right, uh, there's a group, just like the group that did buy the Dodgers. Obviously, Peter O'Malley is 
uh, is a well-known baseball name. Yeah. Phil Nicholson is a well-known sports name. So uh, I don't think Phil is going to be there, you know, uh, you know, picking a general manager. No, he's like probably that. an investor no different than uh, he, Magic Johnson is for the Dodgers. But he's all excited about it because he's I, a I, Southern I, California boy, yeah. Nicholson. And I have to look into that a little bit. I just yeah, uh, I, I just saw I, that I, yesterday. I missed that. Yeah, and let's see anything else going on around here. Da 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 da. Uh, Come, you got notes this weekend? Because uh, I was online and there was a whole bunch of stuff, and I thought, shit, I'm not going to be able to remember all this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and it's trying to cheat. Keegan Bradley, uh, he still on golf. He uh, was a top American in the PGA, tied for third. And he won it last year, which was the first, uh, not his first pro tournament, but the first major that he ever played in. And uh, the kid won it. And he's from, uh, from Vermont. He's got a, an aunt, uh, Pat Bradley, who's in the Women's Golf yep, Hall of Fame. Yeah, the name. Yeah. Uh, so there must be some good golf chains in that family. Uh, Solid to oh, me. You know who's working out, going to get a tryout with the Patriots? Practical bursts. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just, matter of fact, I don't listen to like WEI and those talk shows, but I happen to have it on this morning. And they broke it down to. Uh, I don't even listen when I'm working. Well, they broke it down to uh, the way Belichick does things in the Patriots. They'll, they'll, they'll bring anybody in to look at them yeah. for more than one reason. They'll look at them naturally to look at them. Isn't it surprising that, I mean, he had a. Uh, an, okay year with the Jets last year and nobody's picked him up well you know athletes I mean you know sometimes I do I don't say I feel sorry for them but they got to make their money at the right time they make their heyday because blink and you're gone oh right I mean, you blink and you're gone I but mean, I mean uh, he's one of those big tall receivers yeah but great well, how many how great many? around the end zone because he can go up and get it yeah you know but the Patriots, uh, WEI, it was, uh, matter of fact, I want to mention something about the announcers of the Patriots after. And uh, they were saying, why does Bel why does Patriots get them? They, they got a critique of stuff that they like like to look at. I, I saw the clock when okay. we started. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Stop it. Like, it will get you in the ballpark. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Uh, that's why I did it. Is uh, they have things they... they Worst comes to where the last thing they look at is say they have him work out and they see what he can do, but they don't pick him up. Then he gets picked up by another team. Mm -hmm. The Patriots got a book on him knowing what he can do oh, and right. can't do. Their own book. Well, you so that's part of you why. You think they, they would have had the book already. They, you know, they, well, they, it doesn't cost. They, they, to, these, to you and I, it's a lot of bucks. They might have to pay somebody to come in and do that. Maybe well, not. Well, they probably pay his airfare. You know, I mean, they pay. Some, to you and I, it's a couple of dollars, and we don't, you know, have extra money. Yeah. But to professional sports, that but, piece I mean, changed he, a cup of coffee. He's an interesting. Yeah. I mean, he, he can help some teams. But he'd be no different than uh, Johnson. Was when they took him? No, this guy can actually catch. Well. And, uh, like I said, he's great. Uh, well, he was with the Jets in last the end year. Zone. Yeah. And they, they cut him. And well, they didn't resign him. I mean, they well, only signed him to one year. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm just amazed. I mean, this guy's still got some gas in the tank that nobody's picked him up. He will. Somebody will for sure. Well. Uh, and they'll probably get him cheap. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, because he, he wants to get back in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, announces. I, uh, all right. Yeah, what about them? Right now, we all, excuse me, radio announces. Uh, I, it's, I made this prediction two years ago, and uh, Gino Capaletti and Gil Santos have been there. They've been here forever. Yeah. I mean, I. Well, Capaletti I, retired, right? Cap, yeah, Capaletti, Capaletti. I saw Capaletti playing ball when I told you yeah. I had season tickets. That's how far back, 65 plus. And he retired this year. And last year, you could tell that Capaletti wasn't feeling good. He was going to retire. And I made a prediction who was going to be the next sports announcer for the New England Patriots. Yeah. Well, before I go and throw out my prediction, or it wasn't. Also, Gil Santos isn't feeling well. This is going to be his last year. Mm. So next year, they're going to have two brand new guys. Brand new. We could do it. <laughs> yeah, right. I tell you one, and I love him. 
Squad Zolak. I just love his commentation. He's right up there on it. Last, last year and the year before at the worst, but I know last year, he was filling in a lot on TV with him, and you could see he was getting a trial. Well, he's stepping up a lot. He's stepping up. I remember him. He had class when he was a quarterback with the Patriots. I remember him from uh, uh, years ago, uh, back when I was out in Western Mass, and I used to, yep. uh, you know, I was doing a similar show out there, and so I'd get press passes to yep. be able to go to their games. And uh, and he was there doing UMass football. Okay, now, I didn't realize now that. Now, that's not a... Not not for UMass. Okay. Uh, from like Comcast or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't. I never realized that was uh, Zolak. That yeah. must have been after he left the Patriots oh, as a quarterback. Well, actually. Of course. Yeah. But I love him. I just love the way he talks. He's, if you listen to him, even on WEI, a lot of these guys on radio, they they get people telling them so what who to was say. On, was he on? He was on this. He was on this morning you know, on the way over here. So no, I think but, he. Who who did the first game on radio? Uh, you don't know I didn't that. have the radio. I had the TV. I was watching the TV. Uh, but I, I'm making a prediction that he's going to be one of the Gil Santo Capoletti replacements. Now there's probably going to be another opening because he, he Gil was, Santos had a bad year this year with illness. Yeah. People didn't know. Well, Zolak, I don't know how he'd be on play-by-play. -play. He'd probably be better as the color guy. He'd be a play, color man. Yeah. He, 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 exactly. They, they, they would need a play-by-play -play guy. But, I mean, there's a lot of them guys over If you watch the, uh, there again, doing radio and TV. Myself, where I, we dabble in video. Radio is a lot different than TV. TV is, you're really just repeating what you're seeing. And people are seeing it, too. This yeah, is my, radio, but radio, you, you got to make people visualize. you got to paint the picture for you them. you got to paint the picture. And there's, there's some guys that are great. In the, you know, I mean... Yeah. Uh, well, I'll be curious. Well, they, like I said, this wasn't even nothing to, something I wanted to bring up. Well, I'll be Zolak, curious to see I how your crystal ball is. Well, I, I predicted it two years ago that because I knew uh, Capoletti and Santos were getting up there in age, age only. That's all I was talking. Yeah. Santos is a, a New Bedford boy, New Bedford Fall River, Swansea, that area. Yeah. And uh, I did. He, he's been a great announcer. Capoletti is just was a. He was a, like you said. A, a, Color man. Should be in the right? Hall of Fame. Color. Gil Santos a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. Am I right? Can yeah. I get that right? Because we don't listen to the radio all the time. You know, I like to. Yeah. Capoletti, though, I don't know. I, I th You know, he's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He's probably in the Patriots Hall of Fame. Oh, sure. He's but in the Patriots. football Hall of Fame, I mean, he was one of the, you know, early oh, well, stars of the AFL. 1960. Him and the first two names I can think of with him is Dave Pirelli yeah. and him. But you know, between the old, receiving real, and kicking, he's not—he's not in the NFL. Uh, no. uh, that'd be one of these that's he, kind he of wasn't a, flashy enough, maybe. He was just—he did his job, and how, how many times I've said it on this show, and that's one of my favorite statements of people that do what they're supposed to. They do what they're supposed yeah. to. Well, he plus, wasn't a flat, but he—hey, he, hey, he plus, could kick a football. Plus, back, he, well, he was back <laughs> in those days when position players did that yeah they didn't all have just a guy who did nothing but kick. i mean he he was a receiver and he was a kicker yeah i mean he he said he said for years he had patriot records oh yeah with the extra points and uh you know field goals and he's a and i'll tell you what i personally met him in the years he wouldn't know who i am but he was a gentleman he was in that class yeah. too yeah. Of uh, being a very well, you know, back gentleman. then those guys weren't making big bucks. No, especially he, in the AF. He had a, he had on his own uh, uh, lounge called Point After. It was in the in Boston, downtown Boston, downtown Boston. Uh, in there, we used to go there. We'd walk from Fenway Park because you couldn't get a, you didn't want to get a cab after the game was over. We walked from Fenway down to uh, South Park area, area in Combat Zone which was existing in those days. And we used to go to his lounge and frequent there, and, and uh, Nance, too. Can't think of his name. Went Jim. To, huh? Jim. Jim Nance, right. He had a place in the other end of Boston, and we used to go there and frequent. But they were gentlemen. Those guys, like you said, they, you know, uh, they're very classy guys. Yeah.
Patriots had a lot of them. There was a lot of them. The Speaking old of classy guys, okay. did you hear about uh, the latest with John Lackey? Yeah, I, I was going to... Br- Walking around with the clubhouse, he has beer in each hand, which I don't really care. I mean, somebody wants to have a beer, fine. But, Jesus, you haven't played all year. Uh, you had that, you know, the hoo-ha about last September. And, you know, you're still... Well, but, they, you know, his teammates apparently love him. They, well, the I was, media hates This was him. on when you asked me what we were going to talk about. That was one of the subjects I was going to bring up. Yeah. And I read the articles this past week. And I try not to put a lot of faith in all these articles because some of them, uh, you know, some agree. I agree with, but some of them I just flip. And all the ball players, 99% is my percent again. They love him. I they don't know they why. say he's. He's not the albatross that, pe- that the newspapers make him out to be. And just before I came here this morning, it was on WEI, same thing. WEI stuck up for him on, on the newspaper articles about, uh, that they played. The ball, other ball players like him. I personally have always liked him too. I personally have. But they, even the, new, the radio this morning said the only thing they got against s- – the newspapers don't like you, Lackey. Don't give them ammunition. Why did you have to walk in front of them yeah. with the two beers? Because other players had the beers too. There were other players doing the exact same thing, but the papers weren't going to castrate those other guys. Yeah. But you know they're going to castrate but, you, know, you I, so don't do it. But I'm surprised. That's what they well, were trying to say. because well, he's a buffoon or... You- well, or else his buddies, the, the team, oh, he doesn't the care. team, uh, you know, it's like everybody gets on Beckett on his attitude, you know, his attitude. Well, you until know? he can win a game. Well, you know, maybe, maybe some of these sports writers, we should go out and watch them for six months and find everything that they do on their personal life and see how they well, like it. It has nothing to do with his personal life with Beckett. Has All these athletes don't it, have a personal I don't life. Care. It has to do with his performance on the mound, That's which right. is atrocious. But they go into their personal life. Don't tell me they don't mad. go in their personal lives. Huh? Don't tell me they don't hit their personal life. Having a beer uh, is your personal life. Having a beer is your personal life. All right, but I... But they don't have to put to, it in their front wait, page. What's this got to do with Beckett? Well, I'm just saying that he's another one that they jump on. He jumps so on he, because he sucks. So, He's still pitching in the Major League Baseball, and we're sitting here in front of a well, camera. Well, that's because he's got a damn good agent that got no, him a long term. He's got contract. a good arm. That's what he's got. Not anymore. No. So, so his, he still can laugh all the way to the bank. Yeah. He can laugh all the way to the bank. So, I mean, but but don't tell me he's being picked on. But he, he d- deserves it. <laughs> he does. I don't he stick hasn't up. He won a game since May. Hey, he's like if he whatever he throws per miles per hour, he's lost a couple, and that's he's all you have to do. Lost about five. That's all you got to do. Now you're like a little better than a, than yeah. a batting so, pitching. Right. Coat. So, hey. so uh, just stay away from it. I so, don't like. So justification about his performance on the mound is perfectly. That, I didn't say that. I said personal lives. Right, but we're they not ju- talking all about these guys. Beckett's that's and that's what life. I said about following a reporter. Let's follow a reporter around for six months, see what he does in his personal life, how he all of a sudden sneaks away some night and he goes to some nightclub and he leaves half in a bag. No, of course that doesn't happen. No, because, it doesn't. Oh, definitely doesn't happen. Sure. Those least. guys, are, you know, you know, like uh, Ted Williams, where they, he used to call them. Right. But, you know, go ahead. The thing about Lackey is... I like Lackey. I'm surprised... Sorry, I like Lackey. I'm surprised that his teammates like him as much as, as it's claimed because... They've got to be a basis to well, it. wait a minute. When he's pitching, you ever watch this guy? He does. He and is one of those play? pitches that has the, the facial expressions, yes. Yeah, but he, it's like he shows up his defense. Now, you'd think that yeah. wouldn't sit well. But it, 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 the only answer to that is, and I know what you're saying, is ask these ball players why you like them. Yeah, no. Other than what we've read in the paper. But why do you like him? Yeah. Why do you like him when he shows you up? I mean, that'd be the, if we could get somebody here and say, yeah. why do you like him? Yeah. 
Well, this is why. Well, well, when he does those things and you made an error, because, what do you feel? Ah, that's lackey. Don't worry about it. Well, maybe. Maybe that's what they say. Maybe he pays for the chicken. Well, that's they. They say he's very free with uh, with money, and his yeah. his reason for that is he claims when he was playing earlier in his major league career, a lot of the uh, veterans took care of him too. Uh. I think he's always been with the Angels. He was always with L, you know, the yeah. L.A. Angels. Hey, uh, Lester finally. He pitched good finally too, and he pitched looked like good. Lester. Hey, Twelve strikeouts in six innings. I watched. I didn't see it all, but enough of it. His pitches were just. They were they were breaking. Nice. Unbelievable, like curveball. You know, ball. they 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 lose an hour, an hour um, mile an hour, two three hours, <laughs> miles per hour on a pitch. Now these these major league ball players co call you, and a lot of the thing is that's what you got pitching coaches for. On the sense, I'm not saying losing the speed. Mechanically, we all do. They 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 can all of a sudden just start doing something wrong. Yeah. And you and you, if you're a good pitching coach well, or a uh, baseball unless player, you're a you got to find that stuff. Unless you're a freak like Nolan Ryan. Right. Right. At some point, you need to learn how to pitch as opposed to just throw. I've had that complaint you, go back to uh, you need, Roger Clemens. You need to be able to hit your spots. You need to be Just, able to work inside, outside, upside down, and have, have your control. Look, what, at a, look at a Greg Maddox. Yeah, He didn't yeah. throw that hard. Smoltz, John Smoltz. Uh, well, Atlanta. Smoltz had a good fastball. But they pitched. But they were Maddox pitchers. and uh, who's the other? Glavin. They were pitchers. See, that's my, that's my but, old school but again. But it shows you, I agree you don't you. need to throw... 96 miles no. an hour to be successful if you've got control. A relief, peop- a relief pitcher can do that because he's only in there for a short time. Yeah. As we found out with Beard, Beard this year, they try to make him a starter. He might not be a kid that can be a starter. You know, so far it's, it's, it's ruined him mentally in the head somehow. You know, he, he'll, be, he'll get another shot to come back, you know, when he's, re- when he's ready. But... He used to just go in there, and he knew he had maybe at the tops two innings. Tops. Oh, yeah. T- yeah it's usually an inning and maybe a batter or two. And I've had that complaint for years because there again, my baseball knowledge of being brought up, I had old-timers teaching me, and I say old-timers when I'm 13 years old. I think this guy's an old-timer. He probably He's was probably 20. probably 30. If, just going to say 25 to 30 years old. <laughs> but they taught me fundamentals. I was a catcher and an infielder. But I was a catcher. Your job as a catcher is to get the batters. Your pitcher to throw what you call, and the best way the batter will not hit the ball right, keep them off balance. Now, how do you keep a batter off balance? I, you know, I ask a guy. He says, "Well, you got to mix your pitches up." Nowadays, all these. We got one night, one day on our show, I'm going to we're going to talk about youth baseball. Okay. Okay. I won't touch it today, but. Roger Clemens or anybody else that you just said, except for uh, Nolan Ryan type, that's all he did was throw fastballs, fastball. Well, Ryan it, had a great curveball, yeah, too. Uh, I'm saying Ryan was an exception. He knew how to pitch. Like those guys. We're talking about the guys who just throw, like a Roger Clemens. All those years he threw, none of those coaches could say, you know, this spring, let's work on a nice change-up curve. You know, a guy to control like that, that hard, that, in their prime, Three pitches is all you need. Oh, yeah. Your, fa- your fastball, a, cur- a curve with a different speed, and a legitimate changeup. Mm-hmm. Changeup to a guy who's throwing 95, 96 miles an hour is 88 miles an hour. Yeah. But it key, it, uh, what's the distance? 63 yeah, feet? Balance. 63.3? Yeah. Keep the batter off balance. That's the name of the game. I have never understood guys like Clemens. I know he had a great career. And, 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 and we're not going to go over on his credentials. No. Overall, he did have a great career. But I, I just don't understand why pitching coaches and, and managers don't insist to work on that off speeds, the three pitches. That's all you need. I don't care what they are. Fastball and throw me one off speed and something else. Yeah. So. Well, hey, Mariano Rivera's made a living off they, of one they, pitch. And there's a guy you and I've said, Cut and I've said it to, I've said it to people, and, I, and this is a compliment. I watch that man throw, and I say I can hit him, and I can't, and yeah. and, and, I, and and I say that as a joke. But even because though, I probably couldn't hit him, and yet you know what he's going to throw. Even though he's not throwing that hard, 
No. Same thing he's applies. Spot. spot. Same thing applies, though. If he was a starter, he couldn't get away with that. No. No, yeah. he's a he's a relief pitcher. He'll get in the so, Hall of Fame. Hey, how are we doing on time? Ah, uh, we got when you it was came eleven. Back, we it should was, have been we about got, twenty-five got about minutes. Ten minutes at the most. You sure? Yep. Go ahead, you, to make it uh, make it eight minutes, and we'll be all set. Okay. It'll be under an hour. I thought. Okay. Okay, I know. I'll tell you. You know, without. Seems like it's uh, we were closer nope. than that. Another eight minutes. All right. So. So. But uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. That. The Sunday game was against Cleveland. That was he threw well. I mean, he his ball was, was breaking. Fun. And then they were hitting doubles like there was no tomorrow. The right center field gap was like yeah. they were peppering that. Crawford had three doubles, but uh, you know, once they were ahead so much, I you know, I, I didn't pay much attention late in the game. Yeah, Apparently, he came out with a sore wrist. <laughs> Again. Yeah, you're a thoroughbred. Thoroughbreds are, you know, the mongrel dogs. That's what dogs. he had the uh, surgery on. In the really? The season was that friggin' wrist. They hit too. That you know, the 14 to one, I think. Yeah, it was 14 to one. Yeah, he had three doubles. I mean. Well, he, we're on the Red Sox. Do you think Crawford's going to last? I just brought that out of the blue. I really. Well, uh, I mean, like I he's said, he's come back from his rehab. He's doing. Well, I just he's got, playing. I just got done saying he went out with a sore wrist. Excuse me, I missed who you said. Yeah, Crawford. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. I did know. When you said that, I went. He had three I doubles. I heard you, but I, I thought you were talking about Lester. He had three doubles during a game, you know, great game. Uh, if that's the but, case, I'd shut him down. But they took him out late in the game because of his wrist. If but that's you know the case. Who has played some. You know, Crawford is probably actually hitting better than Ellsbury. But God has Ellsbury made some plays in center field that. Yeah, you can't. Uh, and he's got one more year on his contract. Well, he's done after this year. Well, he's the, a free the, agent. Yeah, I thought he had one more uh, year. This is it. So hmm. now for him. Okay. okay. Yeah, he, I know you follow he, a lot. You better open up the bank. Right. Bank bet. Yeah. And, well, somebody will give it to him. Oh, <laughs> they'll be lined up. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah. Uh, a bulb. Well. And he's got Scott Boris as an I'll agent, you, which is that he team plays could use well. That that team could this team could There'd use be him. very few teams that couldn't use a player like him. Yeah, I mean but, he's because he got you got to get his ball, and he's and he's play, and he's playing like that in a small ballpark. So he has oh, a yeah. bigger ballpark. He can cover a yeah. lot more. The range. only thing he, he can cover a lot more area. But he hasn't shown uh, the, any power this year. He's only got one home run. Yeah. But uh, Crawford, I think, has got three. But Crawford's got a higher average. Uh, I think he had more stolen bases. Uh, but there's just something about Ellsbury in center field that's real special. I mean, that guy can, I tell you, talk about going, go get it. Uh, I mean, you've you got to do something to get a ball by him. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, what he gives you defensively is worth some runs, too. And, yeah, he maybe he isn't giving you the home runs, but he's giving you everything well, see, else. we got spoiled last year. I don't know yeah. if you'll ever... Have a year like he, he had, had a year last like that. Year. And, 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 he, 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 you're right. You you have those years. If he's going to have another one like you know, that, he's going to hit. 30 he had a prover. Runs. Well, everything there was. You know, everybody kept throwing sand at him last year too when he got hurt. Oh, why are you rehabbing in Arizona? Oh, you know, I mean. Well, last there year, again. Well, he played the whole you know, year last year though. Yeah, but before but, he came back after being injured. Yeah. They 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 crucified him because he worked out in. That's uh, back to Lackey. Well, it takes forever. See, that's very Lackey. They crucify him because he's he's staying in Boston to work to get rehab. Then they they crucify Ellsbury because he went to Arizona. Oh, why you got to go to Arizona? Why don't you be? You well, know what I mean? These guys. The problem with Ellsbury is hate newspaper he's reporters. Not, I'm sorry. He's not a fast healer. It takes him a long yeah. time to come back. Uh, he came back last year and, and uh, did a flying job. Uh, well, last year he. He didn't get hurt, yeah. But uh, but this year he was out. Did what, we interview him? I never over, see many many people half. interviewing him. Yeah, yeah. He's quite a kid. But I mean, la you know, this year he was out. You know, over half the year. You know, yeah. before he came back, and it just takes him a uh, a long time. And Ortiz is taking his sweet ass time about coming back. And I'm wondering if he's doing it because he doesn't have he's that gone. extension. He's gone. I don't care. No, but he's you know, gone. he wanted a new contract and he yeah, hasn't yeah, got it. Yeah. But he's I'm wondering gone. if he's sitting there saying, 
I'm going to take my sweet old time. Yeah, he's going. So I don't. I, I. I. I will be very shocked if the Sox sign him. They'll throw throw him out something, and he'll just think it's chump change, which it probably will be. He, yeah, it might only be it, fifteen he, million a year. Yeah, you know. to you and I. Right. Yes. Well, you know, yeah, it'd be close enough now. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for being with us. Tell your friends. Yeah, I don't see any comments on the Facebook. Well, I don't see any from you either. Well, I'm trying to get my feet wet. I well, mean, you know. Yeah, but you've got to get your Facebook friends. I to... don't. I don't like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, the other thing, give right comments. Uh, you know, we we. Yeah, it's uh, Facebook.com/slash Dukes of Sports. Lots of good stuff there. You know, you'll find I'll throw something out. Hopefully, uh, Golden Boy here will break down and yeah. put some uh, thoughts on there. But, you know, you can see what uh, what's there. You can make comments. And uh, more importantly, or as important, you can like us. Yeah. And we like people like us. And uh, But, yeah, check it out. And uh, tell your friends. Uh, and we'll be back same time, same place next week. Hope you have a good week. Keep cool. Okay, let's be good fans, win or lose.